aside myself, my deputy governor, and the SSG, all my appointees never had any official vehicle until about one year in office. That is enough sacrifice. And the vehicles that they are riding now are more or less like higher purchase. And they pay from their earnings. It is not being financed by government or at the end of the day, maintained by government. They maintain their vehicles and at the end of it, of our time, they will have finished paying down. So that is sacrifice and that is savings for the state. So they now, are getting paid? Yep. But you owe workers? Now, for the issue of workers, when we came on board, we inherited about four months' salary arrears. And um, I've always referred the good citizens of Kogi State and Nigerians to our website. Every month we pay. What happened was that we inherited a very large civil servant that are virtually inefficient. And that is one of the five thematic areas of our administration, that is civil service and pension reform. Now, we all agreed, myself and the union leaders, that we should go on verification and screening exercise so as to know the genuine Kogi State workforce. We went into that, it was very, very rigorous. But along the line, as staff are being cleared, we pay. As they are being cleared, we pay. Those that are cleared later will be paid along with the areas. So that is what I mean by the vexed issue of salary payment. As we speak, we are only in areas of just two months. Two we months? Paid, yeah. We paid up till July. In fact, in July, because of paucity of resources and what we got and what we generated, we were only able to pay half in July. And I did promise that I'll pay the balance as soon as our resources or the income improves. And think? as I speak with you right now, that, that particular half has been paid. And in that particular month, starting from the governor myself, all the appointees, first in the history of this country, that we all took half salary, other than judiciary, legislature, and our tertiary institutions that took full salary. Myself, my deputy, all um, uh, uh, political appointees, and other civil servants that are cleared took half salary. But as we speak right now, the remaining half has been paid, and we're in the process of paying the month of August. Mm. This talk of paucity of funds is leading me to my next question. You know, there have been talks about restructuring Nigeria, and I'm yeah. sure that you have listened very intently to that discussion. Mm -hmm. But then there are people who are afraid, I mean, that some states might not be viable. In many instances, they mention Kogi State as one of those states they think might not be viable. What do you say to people who think that your state might not be viable if it doesn't have uh, support from the Federal Accounts Allocation Committee? First of all, the issue of restructuring, I believe in it to the extent that there must be generational restructuring, not the way it is being used by some elites. Generational? Yeah, exactly. What does that mean? Today, I'm the governor of Kogi State, and I'm doing everything possible to make sure we we'll fix it, because I believe in Nigeria. And I believe in the leadership of President Muhammad Buhari, who has long started this restructuring, and he's still ongoing. I will come to that. The issue of uh, viability, Kogi State is viable. It's just that the way and manner it has been administered before, the way and manner the resources have been cutted away, is such that I would liken it to a situation where you're working in mathematics from negative, you have to get to zero point. But from minus two or minus three before you get to zero, that is positive change. That is an appreciation. But it may never be uh, appreciated until you begin to have one, two along the number line. So that is exactly the situation we met in Kogi State, and we took it from and we're making a serious appreciation. And I'll tell you how. I imagine that you'll be drawing up a plan. Okay. I mean, if you're worried about, you know, the fact that the state is re heavily reliant on FAC to be able to meet its obligations, you will be drawing up a plan that perhaps your successors will be able to continue with. Yeah. 
from your targets and from the plans that you have, how soon or in how many years do you think that from what you've seen on the ground and with the resources that could you, you hope to be able to harness, for instance, from yeah. Kogese, be it human or material resources, how soon do you think Akogi will be able to stand on its own feet? First of all, it's ev everything bothers on management of resources. Now, let me take it from the point of where we met the state as, uh, in terms of IGR. Kogise was barely doing 250, 300 million a month. But in less than two years, we were able to take it to one, one billion. And at times, we slightly climb above that. How are we able to do that? We plug all the loopholes. We employ technology. And all the revenue base, which we're tapping into them. So that is how we're able to make some improvement. And I can assure you that in, before we clock two years, at least from our internal generating revenue, we should be able to take care of our salaries and some running costs. And uh, if I tell you that it's not been difficult, it's has been quite challenging. Uh, because what, 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 plugging uh, these various uh, uh, loopholes is quite challenging because people, those that are in charge, are already used to it in the past. The revenue house that we inherited is more or less like two house, two room revenue house. But we were able to put up an edifice that is uncomparable across the country. Mm. If you go to Kogi State, it's there. In less than one year, we're able to put that. In order that we expand our revenue base, and those that are paying the tax, as they, as they see it being utilized, they will be more encouraged to continue to pay and... There are several other... Your Excellency, I'm going to have to ask you to yeah. you know, just hold your thoughts for us because we have to take a moment now. Well, he, you did say that you believe in the government of Mohamed Buhari and yeah. Governor Bello happens to be the only one who declared a public holiday to celebrate the return of President Mohamed Buhari to Nigeria from his medical vacation. We'll ask him why he did that in a moment. Please stay with us.